chapter 1, if you'll read with me here, um, verse 29, you may be able to quote this verse, but what a blessing this is. It says, verse 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Yes. Now, <clears throat> What we have to do in our modern day approach is reading this is understand what was John signifying here? What was this metaphor that he was using concerning the Lord Jesus Christ being a lamb, not just any lamb, but the lamb of God and this lamb which would take away the sin of the world. Now we already had the revelation in Matthew 121 that his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. If we go back and we look at the book of Luke, again, we have four Gospels, and they're not all exactly the same. We have some, some different vantage points from the different writers. In Luke chapter 2, when they bring Jesus on the scene to the temple, we have um, uh, Simon or Simeon, I believe it is, who lifts him up and says, Mine eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. We have another individual named Anna uh, who talked about the redemption of Jerusalem, of, of the people, all in this child, Jesus, amen? And so we're getting different glimpses as we look through that. But here in John chapter 120, uh, 129, I want to look at beholding the Lamb. I want to look at this Lamb because here for the, the individuals in Galilee, those who sat in darkness, they were going to see a great light. And who is this light? Well, it's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. But we see him as the Lamb of God. Now, we want some background here, right? Because we're, we're not Jewish. Well, but we do have some understanding because we're believers in Christ. We've been around the Bible. We've been in Sunday school. We've heard preaching, amen. We know that this is the actual of the typical, the, that which was typified, meaning way back in the book of Exodus, God gives us a glimpse. Even before the book of Exodus, God gives us a glimpse. Look here with me. In Genesis first, please. Genesis. The book of Genesis. Let's go to chapter 3. If you're familiar with your Bible in, in Genesis chapter 3 and then in Genesis 4, we see something about a sacrifice, something about a lamb. We know that in Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel, one offered the fruits of the ground, one offered from the field a sacrifice, a lamb, because he was the keeper of sheep. Abel was, it says there in Genesis 4, verse 2. But here in Genesis 3, after Adam and Eve had sinned, God pronounced some judgment upon them, but that wasn't it. They, they were naked, right. and they were ashamed because they were naked. That sin, I don't want to get too far off and start preaching. We want to teach at the same time, but sin will always bring guilt and shame into your life. And you'll want to hide. You'll want to cover yourself. But the fig leaves that they sown for themselves, it was not good enough right. in the eyes of God. In any of our reformation or any of our goodness or righteousness in the eyes of God is but filthy rags, the Bible teaches. It's not good enough. Right. Look here in verse 21 of Genesis 3. And this is very prophetic then for the future. Genesis 3, verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. He covered them. What did he cover them with? Skin. Well, where did he get that skin from? It had to come from an animal. Blood had to be shed. An innocent animal had to be, his blood had to be shed to cover the guilty. And this, we see then, begins this process of a lamb that we follow throughout the scriptures then. Here then in Genesis chapter 4, we see that the lamb that was offered in sacrifice to God was accepted. But the fruit of the ground, that which Cain labored for out of his own self, was not good enough. Then we go on a little further in Genesis 22, and you don't have to uh, turn there. But this lamb, we, we took a quick peek at it the other week. This lamb was then prophesied as Abraham was about to slay Isaac. 
The angel, the Lord said, wait a second, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Or I'm sorry, um, the, yeah, the lamb was there caught in the thicket, or the ram was caught in the thicket. And the, Abraham offered that in the stead of his son. And so what we see here then, as we follow this, turn to the book of Exodus now. Book of Exodus chapter 12. We get to a, a place in the life of <clears throat> the children of Israel where they're in cruel bondage. Uh, Egypt, the iron furnace as it's referred to. Uh, that for us, which typifies the world. They were crying out. God sent a deliverer, Moses. Um, and you're, you're familiar with the story, I believe. But God began pronouncing judgments against all the gods of Egypt. And the very last judgment that he pronounced was that all of the firstborn in the land, male, would die. Right. Except what? Except there was blood applied to the doorpost and to the lintel uh, or the, 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 yeah, of their home. And here we see in Exodus 12, let's just get, get caught up to pace here and then we'll begin. Exodus 12, the last plague here, uh, death of the firstborn male. The destroyer, as it says here in the scriptures, who is the Lord, uh, would slay all the firstborn, whether Egyptian or Israelite, where the blood of the Passover lamb was not applied to the doorpost and to the lintel. Um, but it, it was only by God's grace and mercy that... Israel was spared. Why? Because they had the message of God from the man of God who told them how to flee from the wrath which was to come. Again, as I'm speaking here in the Old Testament, hopefully your mind's thinking about the lamb which is personified in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says here in Exodus 12 verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year unto you. God's changing everything, amen? Right. This is going to be a, a brand new start. Yes. Verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And then he goes on and tells them what to do now with this sacrifice. Verse 7, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper doorposts of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And then he tells them how to eat the flesh. And he tells them how to be ready. Verse 11 and following. And then verse 12. This is the reason why. He said, I want you to do all this. Because I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. It's interesting. God is being very personal here. He's, he's using that personal pronoun. He's saying, I am going to do this. This is what I am going to do. This is what I expect. This is what's going to happen. And so they had a choice to make. Are they going to believe the message from the mouth of Moses? Are they going to do this? They've already seen everything that has taken place, the, the frogs and the lice and the water turned to blood and, and the, the hail and everything that, I mean, Egypt is literally being destroyed before their very eyes. In a very short time frame. Right. And now, it's going down. Yes. But <clears throat> what, what we want to do is we want to get the spiritual truth behind this all. Because as New Testament believers, as Gentiles, non-Jewish people, when John the Baptist said, when Jesus first came on the scene, 
It, literally, that's his first appearance when he comes on the scene as a, as a man, 30 years old. What do we see? Uh, he says, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Now, their mind must have known this. Their mind must have been thinking about all of the... Every year the sacrifice that was made, the atonement blood that had to be shed to cover their sins. And so this is a very significant type of Christ for his person and his work, which hopefully we'll cover and we'll bring out, because uh, this lamb would be the only way of deliverance from the last plague in Egypt. There was, there was no other way. There was no other prescription. There was no other road. There was no other path to follow. It was this and this only. And the same is true when we personified in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This lamb's blood sprinkled would be the only way out of Egypt. Egypt being a type of the world. Israel could not put away its own guilt or roll away the reproach of Egypt for the last 400 something years that they've been there. There had to be a source outside of themselves to deliver them. They could not do it themselves. That's where God stepped in, amen? amen? They had to, by faith, believe in the divine word of God. Amen. Just as you and I have to do today to escape from the wrath which is to come. I may be getting ahead of myself, but if we have not the blood applied to our life, we're lost forever. Amen. The wrath of God will fall upon us. Right. And we will face an eternity in hellfire where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And there's no escape. They had to believe. We have to believe. Amen. The Lord was very detailed in this Passover message here too in chapter 12. And so we ought not just take it lightly, all the directions that were given, uh, because they had to observe it a very specific way. Because when we look at typology in the Bible, it's very specific when God gives these types about his son himself. So first thing we look at here is the selection of the lamb. This lamb was to be without blemish, it says here in verse 5 of chapter 12. Your lamb shall be without blemish. No spots, no imperfections. Remember in Malachi, when we were there the very first message two weeks ago? The priests were despising his name. Why? Because they were bringing the lame. They were bringing uh, that which was blemished. And they were offering it up to the Lord. And he said, hey, listen, go offer it unto your governor. See if he'll accept it. He won't accept it. Why do you think then the Lord would have acceptance of this? God gave prescriptions that had to be followed. Amen. No spots, no blemishes. Hold your place there. Turn to the book of Leviticus 22. This is the very next book in the Bible, Leviticus 22. <clears throat> Here again, God is giving um, direction through Moses to Aaron how these lambs should be offered up. Leviticus 22, verse 19, You shall offer at your own will a male without blemish of the beavis, of the sheep, or of the goats. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. And whosoever offereth a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering and beavies or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein, blind or broken or maimed or having a wen or scurvy or scabbed. You shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. You see, why is this so important? Because God was so specific, because the Lamb of God, which would take away the sin of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the perfect, spotless, sinless Son of God. Amen? Amen. Our sacrifice for sins had to be perfect. The Bible makes it very clear. 1 John 3, 5, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Amen. Hebrews 4, 15 states, He was without sin. 1 Peter 2, 22 states, Who did no sin, all speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
2 Corinthians 5.21 says that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him was no sin. Why? Because remember what was important, what we just learned last week? The virgin birth. Having no human fa father, God being his father, the blood was not passed down through him to him. He was God. He, he was perfect. He was pure. Amen. He was spotless. Amen. He was upright. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And so this is that lamb of God. Amen. It's not just any, any lamb. It's the lamb of God. The Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, look here in verse 18 through 20, for as much, now again, we're, we're in the New Testament, we're after the fact of Christ being sacrificed for our sins, we're receiving instruction from Peter, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. He reiterates this truth. Verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Amen. He just lets you remember, listen, this just isn't any old lamb. This just isn't any old person. This is God. This was planned before the foundation of the world. That this lamb would be the last lamb, the final lamb, the perfect lamb for sinners slain. Amen. What a blessing. He was to be taken out. It says there in Exodus, if you go back to Exodus 12, he was to be taken out from the sheep or the goats, meaning taken out from, from within, from, from those around him. Remember, the Bible teaches us that God was manifest in the flesh through the virgin birth, that he became a man. In the fullness of times, Galatians 4.4 4 says, God was born of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Such a high priest became us, Hebrews 7.26 says, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Amen? This, this is the Lamb. This is, this is what John uh, showed us. This is what John is wanting the people to see. Just in that, those few phrases right there. Behold, the Lamb of God. Right. What a blessing, amen. Jesus is the Lamb. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7, that He is our Passover. Yes. And, and again, this, is, this all comes down to the great truth of why He was born. Why was Jesus born? Matthew 121. What was his name for? What is the whole purpose of this all? To take away our sin. Yes. Amen. And this is, how, this is what he did in the Old Testament. This was the type. This was the symbol. Now here is the actual. Here is the, the, the person in work. Amen. This lamb, it was to be taken out. It was to be separated. It was to be examined. Not just any lamb would do. Jesus uh, had been set apart from the foundation of the world for this specific purpose. He didn't come just to teach us how to live right, though he did teach us how to live right. He didn't come just to heal the sick and raise the dead and give sight to the blind, though he did those things. He came to save us from our sins. Amen. But let's look further here. So we, we see here the, uh, the selection of the lamb here. What about the slaughter of it? Verse 6, Exodus 12, verse 6, it says that ye are to, Israel shall kill it in the evening. It's one thing just to have the lamb, but now you, actually, you have to kill the lamb. The blood had to be shed. Well, what do we know about Jesus and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, Luke 23 says. It all led to that point right there. Heaven and earth meeting, uh, mercy and justice, grace and love, the wrath of God and the love of God meeting right there at Calvary when this lamb was to be shed or, or killed and his blood was to be shed. We're going to see here that the, the, in the slaughter of the lamb there was the suffering of the Savior's body where 
we read that he was spit upon and mocked and he was beaten and he was whipped and uh, a crown of thorns was placed upon his head and his hands and his feet were pierced and a spear went through his side. Why? Because that precious blood had to be shed. Isaiah 53, please. Here is what we would call a messianic prophecy. Remember, Jesus being the Messiah, this is speaking about him. Well, how can I be so sure of that? Will you turn to Acts chapter 8 and verse 23 or 25, Philip, when he's talking to that Ethiopian eunuch, that Ethiopian eunuch is reading this passage of Scripture, and it said there in verse 35, and he preached unto him Jesus. Because this is who we see, Jesus, right here in Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. This is Jesus. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Here we see the, what we call the substitutionary atonement, the one taking the place for the other. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. My sins were upon the Lord Jesus Christ when he was sacrificed on Calvary as the Lamb of God. Amen. And it goes on further in this passage. It just Look at verse 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Who's he? Speaking of God, what he's seeing here. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Verse 10, look, at, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. To put him to grief. Why? Because this was the only way. Amen. Right. Look at the end of verse 12 there. He was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. Father forgive them for they know not what they do. There's like something like 300 prophecies fulfilled within a 24 hour window. When the Lord Jesus Christ was taken then to be crucified. And it's all here. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24, I believe we read it, that he bore our sins. Amen. Luke 9.22, the Son of Man must suffer many things. He suffered for you and I. Amen. His blood was shed for you and I. Romans 5, please, turn there. Romans 5. Romans 5 and verse 9 and 10. The Bible says this. Well, let's look. At, let's not pass verse 8. Amen. One of my favorite Bible verses. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Yes. He knew your sin. He knew my sin, yet he still died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Justified. The slate being wiped clean. Just as if I'd never sinned. Being now justified how by his blood, that blood which was shed on Calvary, we shall be saved from wrath through him. That wrath which is to fall upon all mankind. That wrath which was going to fall upon Egypt. What stopped it? The blood. Amen. Verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You see, the slaughter of the lamb was substitutionary, meaning the just for the unjust. 
he took my place. He took your place. Jesus is our Passover. Amen. He is our lamb. He, Galatians 1.4 says, who gave himself for our sins. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15, please. Look at what it says here in verses 1 through 3. Here's the gospel right here in a nutshell. Verses 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15. Remember, he, he didn't die to leave us an example. He did not die for our benefit. He, he died in our stead. He, his life for ours. He took our sins upon himself. Again, remember... The revelation that was given in Matthew chapter 1. His name is going to be what? Jesus. Why Jesus? For he shall save his people from their sin. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. It doesn't just say Christ died for sins. It's always personal. Amen. Christ died for our sins, according to what? The scriptures, the truth which we have. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Let me read another verse to you. The Bible says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He took our curse. Amen. He took our sin. He took our guilt. He took our shame. And the Bible teaches us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Meaning there is no forgiveness without the shedding of the blood. But not only is it substitutionary, it's satisfactory, meaning the absolution of the sinner. He, he can go free now. He, he, when he stands before God, he stands as, as Christ stands. Because he is in Christ. He is a new creature, amen. Atonement has been made. God was satisfied with the sacrifice. And we're going to look at that a little later on, too, because the Bible teaches us that he's our advocate right. over there in 1 John chapter 2. And why is he our advocate? Because of the propitiation, right. meaning the, the mercy that he extended by taking our place. Yes. We can be righteous. Amen. Thinking anything else is needed implies that his sacrifice... It's not important. That's right. Saying that there are many ways to get to God is like trampling, as the preacher said the other day, the blood of Christ. Amen. It's like spitting upon the sacrifice because if what you could do could get you to heaven, why did Christ have to die? Amen. He had to die because you were a sinner. I am a sinner. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. Amen. And God accepted that sacrifice. He's not going to accept your sacrifice. He's not going to accept your good works. He's not going to accept your church membership, your religion, your, your giving, your baptism, your taking the communion. He's not into that. Amen. He's into what he did. In your behalf. We've got just a couple minutes left, I believe. Yes. So what else is important here? Well, the blood after the lamb was um, killed, that blood had to be gathered up and something had to be done with that blood. Wow. It's one thing to know that Christ died for your sins. It's another thing to believe that Christ died for your sins. Many know about what Jesus Christ has done. Yes. Very few believe in what he has done. There is a difference between the knowledge and the belief. Amen. One will send you to heaven and one will send you to hell. Right. 
The blood must be sprinkled. Just going through the motions did not count. Just knowing what should be done does not count. It must be applied. Amen. Jesus Christ must be received by faith, the Bible teaches us. If that was neglected, what happened? Judgment fell upon that house. They, they, they could have believed that what they had to do, or maybe they could have thought, well, maybe we should do it another night, or maybe we can do it some other way, or, well, we'll go ahead and kill him, we'll eat the sacrifice anyways, but they didn't apply the blood. Listen, he said, when I see the blood, Amen. I will pass over you. Amen. That's the Passover, Amen. the blood. God, he's looking for blood, right. and our blood won't do. Your blood, my blood, anybody's blood won't do. He wants that pure blood of the lamb. You see, the sprinkling of the blood, that had to be applied. Faith had to be acted upon. And that's how we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We receive him by faith. And when we do that, it brings a great assurance in our life because we know what the Bible says. The sprinkling was a sign both to the destroyer, not to judge, and to the believer that he was safe. Amen. Amen. And the Bible can give you that assurance too. The believer can feel safe knowing that Jesus was judged in his place for his sins because he took that blood and he applied it. Amen. And when we believe in that sacrifice, we take that blood and it gets applied to, to the doorposts of our heart. And it brings salvation. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, the Bible right. says, Romans 8.1. Amen. And we can have assurance of these things. Why? The Bible says over there in 1 John 5.13, um, these words. Let me turn there. I was going to try to quote it. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Yes. It's written for that purpose, that we can know. When, I've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So now I have this assurance. Now I know that his blood for mine, his stead for mine. I am now saved. I am now secure. The act of faith was to believe in the word and to believe its judgments, to believe its promises. The ground of faith was the word. The Israelites had to believe the word from Moses, the man of God. You and I, we believe the word from the preacher. We believe the word from the word. And we act upon it and we can be saved. Amen. And if it's neglected, judgment falls. And so listen, in conclusion, judgment is going to fall. We may not know when, but we know what's going to happen. Amen. The lamb has already been slain. The blood has already been shed. God's provision has been made, but has the blood been applied yes. to your life? If not, you're lost. Amen. If not, heaven is not your home. Right. If not, you will die in your sins right. without a sacrifice. And when you stand before the judge of all the earth, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, you don't have a sacrifice. Right. You have nothing to offer. Amen. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Yeah. Bind him hand and foot. Cast him into the lake that burns with fire. That it will be your second death and your eternal death. Right. And so listen, this morning, this lamb, he's now magnified. Amen. Amen. And we read about that just the other day when we were teaching. In the book of Revelation, worthy is the Lamb. Yes. Over and over again. Revelation 5 and Revelation uh, 22. And, and amen. We see that Lamb again. Amen. Because he's alive. That's right. Is he real to you this morning? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this Sunday school lesson. Thank you for the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I pray that, uh, Lord, your will would be done. Uh, according to your word in our lives and father that we could believe these precious truths and this i pray in jesus name amen